You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 177, with Brad Yates. Are you self-sabotaging your own success? Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What is going on all of you amazing abundant leaders out there? I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast. I'm super excited to be here with you. And today's conversation is one of those ones you're really going to have to consider if it's brand new to you then I want you to pay very close attention and at least consider what we're talking about. I'm going to bring it up a couple times in the conversation and I bring it up at the end of this conversation and that is this. There may be people who are where you want to be in life, doing the things that you want to do, living the lifestyle you want to live and you work hard to get there every single day and many of you get very, very close, myself included. For many years, I got very close, and then I would realize that I would reach an income level, my income would start dropping back down. I would reach a fitness goal, and then my fitness would start dropping back down. What we're doing is we're self-sabotaging ourselves. That may or may not make sense to you right now, but in the conversation, Brad brings up this analogy with the thermostat, and I want you to pay very close attention to that part of the conversation. But we get right into some of the techniques. So that you can not only reach your goals, but push beyond your goal and maintain that and continue pushing through that to basically adjust your thermostat. Now, one of the things other than the techniques that Brad talks about here in our conversation, one of the things that very high performers do is they all have a coach. And you know, I talk about this all the time because I want to have the opportunity to be your coach. If you so choose me as your coach and you even think that I might be the right person for you to help you help coach you in living a life of abundance in family, faith, finances or fitness or all the above, then I would love to have a conversation with you. You can do that by booking a 30 minute discovery call with me so that you and I can get on the phone and decide if we're fit, if we're able to work together. I will decide if you're the type of person that I want to work with and that if I can assist you. And I will be dead honest about that. And I want you to be honest with me as well. At the very least, this 30-minute discovery call will leave you with some tools that you didn't have before we got on a conversation. And that may be all you need. And then you can go on and use those tools completely free of charge. But if we do decide that you and I can work together either in a group coaching environment or in a one-on-one coaching relationship, then we will discuss the next step at that point, and there's no obligation whatsoever. I just want to have this initial discovery call with you so that we can see if we can work together, or at least I can help you on the spot. And you can book your 30-minute discovery call with me by going to menofabundance.com, click on the coaching tab at the top of the page, and fill out that short form. That way I know a little bit about you. I know what it is that you're looking for. I know what your challenges are. That way we can get right into the call. Once I receive that request, I will send you a link to get on my calendar so that we can have that conversation. And of course, before I bring out our future guest today, I want to make sure that I afford you the opportunity to be abundant in your life today by paying it forward and sharing Men of Abundance with everybody you come in contact with. And guys, if you haven't heard about it yet, our Men of Abundance Facebook community is growing And we are having some much better conversations in there, some really cool conversations about helping each other out, learning from each other, and just having amazing conversations with each other. And the Men of Abundance community is completely free. All you have to do is go to menofabundance.com, click on the members only tab at the top of the page, and request access into that group. I have a couple questions just because I want to know a little bit about you, and then I'll give you access. So go to menofabundance.com right now and click on the members only tab and request access to the Men of Abundance community. I look forward to seeing you in there. All right, guys, our featured guest today, Brad Yates, is known internationally for his creative and often humorous use of emotional freedom techniques, EFT. 
Brad is the author of the best-selling children's book, The Wizard's Wish, the co-author of the bestseller Freedom at Your Fingertips, and a featured expert in the film The Tapping Solution. Brad has also been a presenter at a number of events, including Jack Canfield's Breakthrough to Success, has done teleseminars with The Secret, stars Bob Dole and Dr. Joel Vitale, and has been heard internationally on a number of international radio talk shows. Brad also has over 700 videos on YouTube that have been viewed over 17 million times and is a contributing expert in the Huffington Post. Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Brad Yates. Brad, welcome to Men of Abundance, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Wally. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. I'm excited to have you on. You're the, As we were talking during the pre-show, you're the second or third person. I can't remember, but I know at least I had one other person on that's had this basic conversation about EFT and tapping and all the stuff. I'm really intrigued in getting into it and getting your perspective on it. But where are you at in the world? I am in Sacramento, California. Sacramento. I have been there. It was many, many years ago. My grandmother, um, I think it was her third husband. <laughs> I was in Sacramento. They had a little farm. It was really cool. They had we had chickens and stuff. I used to like going back there and getting the eggs and whatever. But Sacramento is not what most people think of California, in my experience anyway. <laughs> no, I, I'm a native Californian, and I never even got here until I was in my uh, late 30s. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have vague memories of that. I was a very young man at the time. So, you know, before we get too much into the show, into the conversation, I like to start out with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Brad? Oh, you know, it's, <laughs> what don't I have to be grateful for? But uh, as I was thinking about the, the question, I, I am very grateful for the technology that allows us to have this kind of conversation such that we can provide um, insights and value to, to people all around the world. So that's uh, particularly grateful for that, for the opportunity of um, being able to share this work in, in, in such a large way. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Now, are you sitting like in your home studio or something like that? I have a wonderful little um, detached office in my backyard. So, Very cool. Very cool. My man cave. I love it. Well, I'm <laughs> in my detached office as well which is actually my Toyota Tacoma pickup truck, and I'm sitting up on a hill looking out over the ocean. Um, so when you oh, talk about rough. technology, you know, I've got my little <laughs> pop screen hooked onto the door here. i got my laptop on my, on my, uh, on my lap <laughs> and my microphone sitting on top of the laptop, and I'm having this amazing conversation with you, and about 90% of my conversations occur right here in my detached office. I like that. Wow. That's awesome. I need to do that. That's where I have my <laughs> office overlooking the ocean. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful view. Um, and then I get to have amazing conversations with guys like you, man. It's just so amazing to be able to do that. Thank you. Yeah, and then Thank share you. it with the world. And that's what I'm looking forward to do today. So the question I want to ask you now is, how would you describe yourself? <laughs> So that when when you and thank you for for uh, prepping me, let me know that you were going to hit me with that question. Um, made it, so the first one of the first things that came to mind is I'm a work in progress. You know, I, I have figured out a lot, and there's still so much to figure out, and really enjoying the journey. Um, you know, it's because I have a lot of stuff out there and, and people think, oh, wow, it's really great what you're putting out there. And it's like, yes, and I have a lot to learn yet <laughs> and uh, and really, really enjoying that. That and I'm someone who's up to something. I have, I have a, uh, something that uh, that I've often over the years put out there it's, uh, and, and have sometimes in, in emails to people saying, I'm up to something. So, and then I and then I use the the line from Space Odyssey, uh, mm -hmm. something wonderful, yeah. <laughs> you know, trying to make a difference. I dig it. I dig it. And thanks for uh, uh, being a good sport about that and, and answering that on the on, you know I didn't prep you for that a couple of days ago uh, with the show flow. Uh, I just dropped it on you a couple of minutes ago, and it was a great, absolutely great answer. I love it. Thank you. You know, so you know we're going to get much more into your story and everything, and part of everybody's story in many cases, starts with some sort of a kick in the gut moment. And in some cases, that defines them and it re, re, you know, redirects their life and where they're going to go. And in some cases, it doesn't. But at this point, I would love for you to share one of those kick in the gut moments that really took you to your knees and really make us feel that. 
one of the uh, one of those moments was after um, so I had been an actor in Hollywood and uh, when my wife was pregnant with our first child I decided you know I need to have a backup career <laughs> mm-hmm. so that was the that was the first kind of it wasn't so much a kick in the gut as a uh, as a little a, a gentle slap to the face of wake up <laughs> You might need to uh, have a more um, promising uh, direction here, but um, and so after, so I trained to become a hypnotherapist. Been doing that for a couple of years, and then uh, then we moved to. Then I decided that I was that I was enjoying this career more than being an actor, and we decided to leave Los Angeles. But when we moved. Uh, the, the, I had lost all my clientele because I was only seeing people in person. So I had to start over, and we couldn't afford. We moved over to the Bay Area and stayed with my moved in with my parents at first before we could find a place. And that's kind of when I had a kick in the in the gut. Is after a short time of being there, I was I looked in the mirror and uh, and saw that I had I'd put on a fair amount of weight and just thought that's not me but I had moved up here I hadn't uh, I hadn't figured out hadn't gotten my bearings yet and I wasn't sure what uh, I, I, you know I, I left what I had started in LA and hadn't figured out how to start it yet um, in Northern California so I was pretty directionless and and just looking in the mirror and seeing I am not healthy <laughs> so that uh, that kind of got me thinking I really need to focus in and figure out what am I doing and what do I who I want to be and what do I need to do to take care of myself and be of service yeah yeah absolutely that and that um so how did that per- kind of get you further into what you're doing now you know I think it's it was about the time that I that I learned EFT uh, and I may have already learned it but I just hadn't you know, I'd gone to a, a workshop and and learned it, but it was still kind of hadn't quite put it together and hadn't realized that I needed to uh, to do something with it. So that motivated me to to start doing more of the tapping. And you know, with this process, we you know we clear away those limitations. The you know, I like to I like to refer to what I call the Michelangelo process. So, Michelangelo said the statues were already there, perfect inside the marble. All I had to do was chip away what didn't belong to reveal the masterpiece inside. And so that's how I see us as human beings. So, you know, as I look at that that overweight version of myself and recognizing. Okay, that's not who I really am. The real me is inside there. I need to chip away what doesn't belong and chipping away or tapping away those those limiting beliefs about uh, who I am, what I can handle, tapping away the fears that uh, and the misconceptions about things that had me um, not not taking better care of myself or my business or my family. So really, starting to move more into that and, and you know becoming more dedicated to to chipping away what didn't belong yeah so guys you know brad's using some terms here that you may not be familiar with and if you've been following me for a while you know i've had this conversation before about eft which is emotional freedom techniques and this tapping technique of really as brad is saying chipping away some of the backstory some of the you know, stuff that doesn't really belong there or stuff that you don't want there anymore is is what I get from it. And I have, um, you know, kind of dabbled around a little bit with the tapping process. And Brad has been uh, kind enough to, he brought this up just before the show actually, and I'm glad he did. He's been kind enough to walk you through a demonstration where you're going to be able to follow along safely, of course, if you're driving or something like that. (laughs) And no operating heavy machinery while tapping. Uh, he'll he'll walk through the the environment that you have to be in to get the best out of this, so that you can come back to the show, and you know when you are in a safe environment and in the proper environment, not just a safe environment, to go through this 
tapping uh, technique that he is going to take us through it right at the end of the show. We're going to do that for you guys. And I encourage you to at least give it a try. I know it's way out of some people's norm. And Brad, I want you to talk on this a little bit because I know you have this conversation all the time with yeah. guys is that what you're <laughs> wait a minute. What? So give it a chance. I tell you guys all the time, expose yourself to things that you've never done before and you will be super surprised um, that you may just kind of grasp onto it. So can we talk a little bit more about that, Brad? Yeah, absolutely. So the tapping uh, is, is based originally on acupuncture. And so a psychologist found that by tapping on the same points that an acupuncturist where uh, they would stick needles uh, caused an emotional shift. It caused a this first client that he tried it with, it helped her relieve a lifelong fear of water. So instead of sticking needles in, in our face and body, we're, we're tapping with our fingertips on these certain points. And it looks a little different, and it looks a little strange to some people. So uh, there is some resistance, and folks will go, yeah, that's, that's silly, and I don't want to do that. But it provides real benefits. So one of the things that really, <laughs> that, that sometimes helps people is knowing that there are rock stars using this, there are Super Bowl and World Series winning athletes who are using this, who, um, because they find it so beneficial, it helps them improve their level of performance, as well as relieve stress, uh, move through injury faster. Uh, it has benefited a lot of people in terms of allowing more abundance into their lives. So there's all kinds of possible benefits. And so it's it's simply a matter of saying, okay, you can trade all of that for looking cool and not tapping on your face. <laughs> or, you could, or you can say, all right, if these people operate at the highest levels of achievement are doing this, then maybe I can get over my resistance and uh, and allow myself the benefits. And if not, you know, that's not to, not meant to, to shame anyone and say, you're stupid if you don't do this. It's it's simply a matter of, you know, give it a, as you said, give it a try, be open to it, because there are, like I said, people at the highest levels of achievement, and I'm only describing a couple of professions. There are doctors, lawyers, all kinds of uh, all kinds of folks who have find that wow, this tapping is really beneficial. Helps me feel better. Helps me perform better. And uh, so they're using it in their lives. Yeah, and thanks for bringing that up. And you know, guys, I talk about coaching all the time, and so many men are resistant to coaching. And the fact of the matter is, like Brad just mentioned, so many high performers, it's amazing how you look at high performers and every single high performer that I personally know and that I read about, they have not one but several coaches in their life for various aspects of the life. Those that don't, those that aren't high achievers that want to be, they're resistant to having a coach. So it's the same type of thing, right? It's, you know, they're doing something that you're not doing. So figure that out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's really that simple. So is this something that, um, and how does it relate to EFT? How does tapping relate to EFT? It's, it's all in the same? It's just another name for it. I see. Um, so EFT, emotional freedom techniques, uh, that tapping is just a, a word that people commonly use to describe the process. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And I can see how, you know, I'm just thinking in my mind because there's many different um techniques and many different vocations out there that kind of use one of two names interchangeably because some people see tapping as kind of weird but ah, eft i can do that <laughs> you know <laughs> right. i'm just being honest about it that's the way i see it but so is this something that you would uh you can do one time and then you know get all these results from it that you want or release any energy or whatever the case is oftentimes when we're tapping we get a shift that uh that is done so like you know if you get something um, some dirt on your hands and you wash your hands then the dirt's gone but there are going to be times you're going to have dirt on your hands again mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I, I recommend tapping on a daily basis as part of our daily hygiene routine you know just like taking a shower brushing our teeth we do it on a daily basis we don't wait until uh, it's obvious that people are holding their nose and walking away from us mm -hmm. uh, because stress happens and tapping is a way of clearing that stress out, and lowering it so that we feel much better. So it's it's either and you can look at it as energetic or emotional hygiene. So I, I encourage people to do some tapping on a daily basis. Now the tapping that we do, again, it it can clear 
particular um, memories, troublesome memories, particular beliefs. Uh, but most of us have quite a few things that <laughs> might be stopping us from having the best life possible. So it's a matter of continuing and, and using tapping uh, frequently to uh, to keep clearing that stuff out so we get to feel better and have a better life. Right. Now, you're not just tapping on these particular pressure points that you're talking about and you're going to walk us through. You're also using uh, – you're also talking to yourself basically. Is that correct? Yeah. So – the tapping in and of itself is is a very simple form of stress relief. And without saying anything, you can start to feel calm down and, and, and feel better. And just thinking about a certain issue. With the words, what I try to do is bring up what might be blocking someone in a particular area of life and, and bringing to mind those things that might be troublesome so that those troublesome feelings come up in the body and then we can effectively uh, calm the system down and, and and clear that stuff out. Right. Interesting. So what are some good news stories that you've walked some people through? And let's talk a little bit about, let's say, some fear issues, maybe some, some phobias or something like that. And then give me an example of something sort of in the abundance mindset type of thing to where they're they're at a they're at a ceiling and they just can't push through and they want to they're at a, already at a high level but they want to push through so, to a second level. You have some examples like that? Uh, you know, there's <laughs> all kinds of examples. I'm, I mean, I, I just, I, you know, I, on my YouTube videos, I get comments every day, and just like 15 minutes ago. I got a comment from a woman saying, I, I was on my knees this morning considering suicide, and something said, w she said, people have been talking about tapping, they've been talking about tapping, and I hadn't looked it up, and this morning I was having one of those moments again, and I just thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I'm going to go look on the internet, and she said, I found, I found this video of yours, and it saved my life. Wow. And I'm... And I'm not saying that to aggrandize me. It's the, the tapping process, and I just happen to have that out there. She, it could have been any tapping. But just seeing, you know, from from the, well, I'm feeling a little bit stressed out. I'm feeling a little angry, and I tap, and I feel a little bit better. Or I have a, a little bit of a headache or a little bit of an upset stomach because the tapping can help with physical issues. But seeing the potential of people on the on the verge with with really troubling emotions and the tapping sometimes in a matter of moments can bring someone um back from from that place and uh you know and and really shift something yeah that's very interesting to me i find it very intriguing uh and it's something that like journaling you know, it's something that I'll get started with, and then I start seeing a little bit of results and, and feeling a little bit better about my progress and what I'm doing. And then just my human nature, what I noticed about myself is I have an inclination to stop doing that. And I'm talking yeah. about journaling, for instance, and stuff that I know that really helps. And then I'll go through a little couple of weeks, and then I'll notice some of my results will start backing off. I'm not paying attention to my calendar, so on and so forth. And then I start doing it again. I realize I got to get back into it, and I got to stay with it. Same with exercise. It's the same. You yeah. know, I, I feel better, and then I stop exercising because I get to a point where I want to be. So I'm guessing, and I'm seeing obviously that it's the same thing with the tapping because I did do it for a couple of days, yeah. and I really did feel a, a difference in what I was doing. So, and it's brilliant. It's it. This is brilliant, Wally, because. And we too often we beat ourselves up for this. It's like, oh, you know what? I was doing well, and then I stopped. I, I like to say that self sabotage is simply misguided self love. Mm. So what happens when you, you know, you're journaling and or or exercising or whatever it is that we're doing, and we start to see improvements? And part of us is like, hey, that's great. And part of us is like, holy crap, my life is changing. I don't want change. I gotta, I gotta knock this off. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's very subtle. It's unconscious. Mm -hmm. We're not consciously thinking, oh, I'm uncomfortable now. But we have a comfort zone. It's like a thermostat, and we have a financial thermostat as well as an emotional thermostat, a relationship thermostat, a health thermostat. You know, so when it gets too hot, the air conditioner kicks on. When it gets too cold, the heater kicks on, and it always takes us back to you know 72 degrees or wherever we have our thermostat set. 
So we have a financial thermostat. You know, it may be twenty-five thousand dollars a year. It may be ten million dollars a year, and we can't go above that. And we mustn't go below that. And we will unconsciously do things to get us back to that comfort zone. So when we're exercising or journaling and doing things and we notice that we're getting improvements, part of us says, ah, it's getting too hot. We need to turn on the air conditioner. And we just conveniently find some way to stop doing whatever that new habit is. So it's brilliant. We want to have compassion for ourselves and recognize I'm, I'm only doing this because part of me says it's not safe to keep getting the benefits. It's not safe to continue with this practice because it's going to take me out of my comfort zone. And that's where tapping can be beneficial is that it, it calms that stress response down. But then we have to, you know, have – it's good to have some kind of accountability so that yeah. someone says, hey, you know, are you still doing your tapping? Are you still keeping up with your um, things? Because there is that, that human nature to try to, uh, to get homeostasis, to try to get us back to our comfort zone. Man, that is extremely powerful. And that thermostat, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that thermostat is subconscious. And I, I believe that because, and I say that because, let's say, for instance, I want to have $20,000 sitting in the bank. Or I want to have these rock-hard abs back again. Or I want to have, you know, this perfect relationship or whatever. That's what I'm, my brain is telling me. That's what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling myself. That's what I'm putting in my journal, for instance. But I get to a certain point. And that thermostat kicks back in, and it keeps me at that homeostasis where uh, yep. subconsciously my brain is at. So the tapping is going to move me, and this type of tapping and, and other techniques is what's going to and, – and having accountability and a coach is what's going to push me past that to exceed what my subconscious mind is telling me where I'm comfortable at. Yeah, because that because that thermostat can be changed. We can go in and adjust it, but it is un, it is unconscious. You know, it's like okay, you know, you want to know where your thermostat is set. Look at your bank account. Get right. on the scale and and weigh yourself. Look at your you know. And so we can look at it and say, oh yeah, I always seem to be coming back to this to this place, and it's only because we have programming from the past that tells us that's where it's safe. You know, people who make more than seventy-five thousand dollars a year are evil and greedy. People who make less than seventy-five are losers. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you know, and we don't, and we're not consciously thinking about that. We just find that, you know, it's interesting. Every year, I seem to make about seventy-five thousand dollars a year. <laughs> no matter how much effort so. you put in. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we'll find a way to sabotage it. It's like mm -hmm. I'm going to put in a lot of effort, and then I'm going to do something like, you know, maybe I'll manifest a car um, issue so that I have to spend all this money fixing my car. <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, there's all that money went away. Exactly, or you need a new car when you really didn't. You know, yeah. it's any, you, know it's, you piss the money away somehow or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, And I know many of you guys are out there listening to this, and they're saying, damn, wow, you're having an epiphany right now because you can relate. And I know you can. And don't beat yourself up for it. Right. Because that's what we do is we beat ourselves. We say, oh, man, I blew the money again. Oh, I screwed up. I stopped exercising again. And we beat ourselves up. And that's brilliant, too, because the more time we spend beating ourselves up, the less time we spend changing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just recognizing, having compassion, going, oh, thank you for trying to keep me safe. Let's let's change our definition of safe now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I dig it. That's That's amazing. So, Brad, we're at the point right now where we're going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. You ready to do that? Absolutely. Excellent. So sh share one to three actionable steps that men of abundance can take today. Well, uh, obviously, my first step is uh, is tapping. <laughs> I would recommend that, that, that guys, you, you look at this and and say, okay, here's a tool that I can actually use on a daily basis to reduce stress, change my mind about success, change my mind about abundance, about my health, and start to allow things to get better and better. Excellent. Now, I'm sure tapping is one of them, but what daily habits make the biggest impact in your life? <laughs> I don't want to be a broken record, Wally, but... Uh, <laughs> tapping uh, <laughs> now obvious, obviously it's not just tapping because I you know tapping won't feed me or get me in shape so um, I, I exercise on a daily basis I you know first thing get up very early in the morning to exercise do some meditation uh, do some journaling some reading some visualization uh, so you know I, it's all those different things of feeding feeding your body and your brain to uh you know, to maximize your potential. 
Excellent. What would you recommend our Abundant Leaders read or listen to in reference to EFT and tapping? Oh, uh, and you I would plug recommend your YouTube channel. Brother. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> I would. I would recommend you look at my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, and if you ki- if you have kids, I'd recommend you have them read the book The Wizard's Wish, which you can find on my website. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We talked about that during the pre-show. But yeah, I'm glad you brought up the book because that's something that I really like, especially when dads can sit down and read these books with their kids. And and it's it's an exciting book to get in front of your kids. And if your kids are going to learn something from a story as well, which is generally the case, we try to have our kids read these stories that they learn something from. Can you talk a little bit more about the book and exactly what it's about and, and where it takes the kids' minds? Yeah, so I had I had wanted to find a fun way to describe uh, tapping to kids, and having you know been reading to my kids when they were little, I thought, oh, I'll come up with a fun story. So it's about a, a wizard who finds that the people in his village are uh, being bothered by all kinds of different troubling feelings, and he discovers that by tapping on certain points with his wand, he's able to uh, help get rid of these yucky feelings. And then when people are complaining that they uh, that they don't have magic wands, he realizes that he can use his finger as a magic wand, and that he can sh- shows the uh, how everyone is able to use their own fingers as magic wands to uh, tap out the yucky feelings. Hmm. Very cool, very cool. So, what do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? Uh, it is our limiting beliefs, our our fear that we can't handle uh, greater abundance, that it would be, or the fear that it would be wrong to have greater abundance, or we don't deserve it. That's a that's a huge one for a lot of people is feeling not good enough or not deserving. When there's so much evidence, like I mean, <laughs> right where you are, looking out at the ocean, you have the perfect the perfect view of how God, Creator, Universe is saying to you. This is here for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if this is here for you, what isn't? Uh, I, I often tell people, you know, when you can look out and you can see the stars at night or you can see the beach, there are so many ways that the universe shows us that abundance is our birthright. It's here for us as much as anyone else. We can go out, you know, if, if Bill Gates was sitting there, he'd have the same view of the ocean that you do. He's no more deserving of abundance than you are. Mm-hmm. And... It's just allowing ourselves to to recognize that and and say, okay, so if it's there for me too, I, it's okay for me to allow it. It's okay for me to do those things that bring me the abundance. And the great thing is, as you allow yourself to know it's okay to have the abundance, you're going to take actions, you're going to share your gifts in a bigger way. So it's a win-win situation for the world. It really is. What does living so So what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Brad? Uh, having enough to share, having having my needs and, and wants uh, taken care of, being able to live the life that I choose to live, such that I'm able to, uh, you know, share my gifts in the way that feels right, and, uh, and I get to go places to do that, <laughs> which is <laughs> always fun. <laughs> exactly. I love traveling, man. And especially when you're traveling and you kind of got a little bit of, I'm using air quotes, work along the way. Uh, because yep. you get to touch so many lives and, and just help so many people in just so many ways. What an amazing life. What an amazing way to live. I love it. Yeah, it is. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Awesome. So now we're going to get into this session. I want you to kind of set it up and, and, you know, the whole tapping process and really set this up. Before we even get into that, though, because we're going to leave you right after this, guys, right after we get done with this tapping session. We're just going to close out the, the conversation and we're going to be done. Uh, so before we do, what did we not talk about today, Brad, that you want to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation? Oh, <laughs> um, you know, there's so many things that we could talk about. Uh, I think that, that anything that needs to, to get said will will be said in the tapping round. Awesome. Okay, and then um, any links that we hit, we you want to share with us that we have in the uh, – I'll put in the show notes. Um, if you have the the website tapwithbrad.com mm-hmm. up there and uh, and on there there's links to, to find my videos and uh, and all that other good stuff. Excellent. I'll have all of that linked up in the show notes at menofabundance.com. Excellent. All right, Brad. 
it's all yours, brother. Take it away. Let's end, end this out with some tapping. Okay, excellent. So everyone, what we're going to do is we're going to tap with uh, with two fingers. So you can tap with both hands. You can tap on either side of the body. But for the uh, sake of demonstration, I'm going to say go ahead and take your right hand and using the fingertips of your index and middle finger, go ahead and gently tap on the karate chop area of your left hand. So that's right there on the side of your hand, the edge of your hand right between your wrist and your pinky. So if you're to imagine breaking some boards with a karate chop, that's that area right there. So just tapping gently with your fingers, just a gentle tap, 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 tap motion. Uh, you know, it's hard enough to feel it, but you don't want to be bruising yourself. This is a uh, a self-help situation, not a self-harm situation. And so while we're tapping gently on the side of the hand, we would talk about whatever the issue is. So if you were feeling stress, you'd say, even though I have this stress, I choose to love and accept myself. We'd tap that three times, say, or we'd repeat that phrase three times. Then we would go to the eyebrow point. So right at the beginning of your eyebrow, just about the center of your face, above your nose, you gently tap in there, and we gently tap five to ten times, and you'd say, this stress. Then you'd move out to the, uh, su- the outside of your um, eye. So right there, follow your eyebrow out to the uh, outside corner of your eye socket, gently tap there, and say, this stress. Following the, uh, the eye socket to right under the middle of your eye, just above your cheek, tap in there you'd say this dress right under the nose just above your upper lip this dress right under your lower lip just above the chin tap in there and say this dress then when you feel your collarbones come together there's a little u-shape at the base of your throat go ahead and make a fist and tap right where the collarbones meet and say this dress then about four inches below your armpit and then you can tap with all your fingers there and say this dress. And then finally, with all of your fingers, tapping in a little circle around the top of your head, around the crown of your head. Just tap it around the top of your head and say this dress. And then you take a deep breath. So if you uh, rated your stress on a scale of 0 to 10 and it was at an 8, through this tapping process, you'd find that number coming down. So that's the very basic form of tapping. Uh, now we're gonna. Now that you know the points, now we're gonna have some fun with it. So what I'd like you to do is close your eyes, take a deep breath, and say, "I am open to great abundance." Just notice what goes on inside. Notice how you feel. Rate that on a scale of zero to ten. Part of you is gonna say, "Oh, it's absolutely a 10. But if you're not already experiencing great abundance or as much as you'd like, then that's a clue that your unconscious is <laughs> is not totally okay and open with that. So just notice what thoughts, beliefs, and memories might come up around that. Notice what you might feel physically and emotionally. And go ahead and start tapping on the side of your hand. And Wally, if you'll be my echo voice and repeat back the phrases that I say, and then everyone else can uh, just repeat back, uh, repeat the words along with you. Okay? Great. So tap on the side of your hand. I choose to be even more open to abundance. And I choose to love and accept myself. I choose to be even more open to abundance. And I choose to love and honor myself. I choose to be even more open to abundance. Because there is so much evidence that this is an abundant universe. And I choose to know it's there for me as much as anyone else. So I choose to be even more open to abundance. And I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. Tap in the eyebrow point. I choose to be even more open to abundance. Side AI. I'm opening myself up to even more abundance. 
onto the eye. And I'm clearing any fears about that. Onto the nose, clearing any resistance to that. Onto the mouth. Because if I don't have all that I want, collarbone, it's because part of me is saying, onto the arm, it's not okay to have more. Top of the head, it's not right to have more. Eyebrow point, maybe it's not safe to have more. Sadi eye, and why not? Sadi eye, because the more abundance I have, onto the nose, the more I have to share, onto the mouth, and it is an abundant universe. Collarbone, there's plenty for everyone. On the arm, my abundance doesn't have to take away from anyone else's. Top of the head, I choose to know it's okay to have more abundance. Eyebrow points, so I'm clearing all the old beliefs about that. Sadie eye, about why it would be wrong or bad to have more. Out of the eye, about how other people would be upset. Out of the nose, because as long as I'm having more, on a mouth, I can show them how to have more too. Collarbone, it's a win win situation. Out of the arm, so I'm clearing the resistance to having more. Top of the head. I love and appreciate that part of me. Eyebrow point. That's been trying to keep me in my comfort zone. Sorry, I'm maintaining that thermostat. I'm allowing myself to be comfortable. Onto the nose with turning that thermostat up. Onto the mouth. I'm worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. Collarbone, I'm allowing myself to know that. On the arm, I'm setting myself free to experience even more abundance. Top of the head, in body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. Do that on a daily basis and you will find yourself more and more open to even greater abundance, which is here for you and it is your birthright. All right, guys, I know these techniques may be a little bit outside your wheelhouse and they may be a little bit different. And here's the thing, as I mentioned in the conversation and before we got started here, those who are where you want to be in life are doing something you're not. And if this is it, then maybe you should at least give it a try for a couple months. And, and see where it takes you. See what it does. It can't hurt. It might push you through your goals and beyond. So give it a try. You never know. Now go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.